Hey guys, welcome back to Med School Moose. This is going to be US Emily Step 1 Antibiotics about Astrianam. As always, I know the title says US Emily Step 1, but this information is also very high yield for Comlex Level 1. So if you're taking that exam, I definitely recommend you keep watching this video. Same outline as always, I'm going to keep doing this uh, for the next few videos in this series until we get kind of a rhythm going. We're going to first talk about the classification of that antibiotic. We're then going to go into the mechanism of action, the uses, the side effects of taking that antibiotic, and then if applicable as it is in this video, we will talk about the resistance. So starting with the classification of Astrianam, it is a monobactam. And the reason that it is, it's with the chemical structure. This isn't super high yield. You definitely don't need to memorize this, but it has one cyclic ring and it has a beta-lactam ring as well. So one cyclic ring, monocyclic, it's a beta-lactam, monobactam. And you see in the structure here, this is the one cyclic ring and this is the beta-lactam portion of the antibiotic. So that's how you get monobactam. The other important thing to know about this, and we will come back to this multiple times throughout this video series, is that it is indeed a beta-lactam. This is a very popular type of antibiotic uh, because of some reasons that we'll talk about later, so you definitely need to know that. There are other monobactam antibiotics. Tigamonum, uh, excuse me, is uh, another one, but really none of those are high yield for USMLE or Comlex. The only one that you really need to know is Astrianam. In terms of the mechanism of action, it's going to be somewhat similar to vancomycin that we saw in the previous video. Uh, Astrianam is going to bind penicillin binding protein 3. It has a very high affinity for that. And it's going to prevent cell wall formation by preventing cell wall cross-linking. Um, Astrianam also has a lower affinity for penicillin binding protein 1A. But the higher yield one to know for exams is going to be 3. And the other important thing to note with this, I said it is a beta-lactam, it is less susceptible to beta-lactamases. Note that I'm saying less susceptible, it is not completely resistant, and we're going to talk about that a little bit near the end. So here's a, a quick graphic to kind of break down exactly what's going on. Similar to what we showed in the vancomycin video previously, these are the two um, portions of the cell wall that are attempting to crosslink. You have the penicillin binding protein here. And normally, the penicillin binding protein is able to form that cross-linking without difficulty. If you have an antibiotic, like Astrianam uh, in play, it's going to actually bind that penicillin binding protein. Remember, it's going to bind penicillin binding protein 3. And it's going to make a conformational change, and it's going to essentially deactivate that. So there's going to be no cross-linking. The cell wall is not going to form, and you know the cell will just uh, die, essentially. Uh, so in terms of the uses of Astrianam, it is for gram-negative rods only. This is important. Astrianam has no activity against gram-positive rods or anaerobes. All right. It's mostly used for patients with allergies to penicillins and those who cannot tolerate aminoglycosides. But an important thing to know is that if you are giving aminoglycosides, Astrianam is synergistic with that. The activity of both of those kind of combines and powers up so it is synergistic with aminoglycosides. Like I said, only used for gram-negative rods. One of the most popular and more testable ones is Pseudomonas. This is a great drug uh, against Pseudomonas, especially in patients with cystic fibrosis. The other important thing to note in terms of the use of Astrianam is that it's typically given IV or IM. It has very poor absorption orally, so it's not used very much orally. In terms of the side effects of Astrianam, it's typically pretty well tolerated. I mean, you can get some injection site reaction, you can get a mild rash, vomiting, diarrhea. Probably the more important symptoms here are the GI distress. And in very, very rare cases, you can get a severe uh, skin condition called toxic, toxic epidermal necrolysis. An important thing to note with these side effects, there is no cross allergenicity with penicillin. So just because someone is allergic to a penicillin does not mean that they cannot get as Trianam. It is typically very safe to do so. The last slide here is going to be talking about the resistance. Like I said before, it is less susceptible to beta-lactamases. It is not completely resistant. And we don't need to get into the biochemistry here. But basically what it is, is that that beta-lactamase enzyme is produced by uh, bacteria and it pops open this ring. It, it forces a conformational change, an enzymatic degradation of that beta-lactam ring of the antibiotic. The antibiotic is not able to bind to the penicillin binding protein or whatever other protein that it's binding to. It can't prevent that. The cell wall cross-linking happens and then the cell wall is created. So that's uh, the mechanism of resistance for uh, bacteria against Astrianam. 
And that is the end of this video. It was a quick one. As always, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, like and comment on my videos. If you have suggestions, please do let me know. Thank you for watching and good luck studying.